Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here. And I probably say this in every video, but it's been a minute, hasn't it? It's been like, now when I'm filming this, 82 days since my latest video. And this is crazy, because that video has 10,000 views. And before that video, I was silent for like five months. And basically, if you don't post any videos in YouTube for five months, it's basically a suicide. And that's why this is incredible that that video that I posted almost 100 days ago has 10,000 views. Because that means that subscribers are loyal. So you are very special because you found that video even though I have been gone for so many days. So thank you for that. This is crazy. And uh, yeah, I have to say, yeah, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If not, welcome anyway. I, I feel that I always start the video by saying like, I'm sorry, I haven't been uploading anything. But uh, the thing is that I live in Finland, I'm Finnish, but I work in Oslo, Norway. So basically I'm there all the time. And that's the reason why simply I don't have time to make these videos. And of course I have the desire to make vlogs and blah, blah, blah. But in my head, there's just too many excuses. And yeah, that's how it is. But anyway, today uh, I want to watch a 10 minutes video called The History of Turkey. And I feel that I should have watched this video back in 2020, 2020 when I started making these Turkish reaction videos. Because uh, even though I've learned a lot of things about Turkey, I still feel like I don't know anything. It takes years to get to know something. And uh, before we start watching, I, I have to say that uh, the impression that I have of you is very, very nice. And I feel that you know so much about your own culture and history. I'm always so surprised like how you can know all that things. I feel like you are up to date about everything that happens in in the world, in Turkey and also in 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 all, all over the world. So I'm just impressed about that. But I feel that every single person in Turkey knows exactly what has been going on in Turkey for the past 1000 year. Uh, yeah, sorry for the sorry for this podcast, but yeah, let's start watching the history of Turkey. And the history of Turkey from this title, we can understand as the period between the formation of the Republic in the 29th of October, 1923. Been to Istanbul in the airport a few times, one night in Istanbul back in 2011. Antalya, I want to go there for holiday. Izmir is very beautiful, I've heard. Uh, and my friend said that Ankara is boring. There's nothing to do in Ankara. I, I really don't know if I believe that, but I have to come and find out. Practically, the history of the region now forming the territory of not only the Republic of Turkey, but also Anatolia. The earliest representations of culture in Anatolia were some... Turkey's geopolitical location is like, it's, what is the right word? It's mm, challenging. You know, we are neighbors with the big Russia and, uh, and that's enough for us to think about. But you, you have like, all the all the uh, controversial countries uh, at your neighbor. So good luck with that. At the start of the Bronze Age, metallurgy spread to Anatolia from Transcaucasian cultures in the late 4th millennium BCE. The remnants of Bronze Age civilizations such as the Haitian, Akkadian, Assyrian, and Hittite peoples provide us with many examples of the daily lives of its citizens and their trade. I feel that I don't understand anything. It goes very fast and the words are like, they are harsh. You know, I'm not native English speaker. System of local government in Anatolia allowed many cities and ports to grow and become wealthy because of the influence of trade and growing up. I know that there's a lot of... Uh, the relationship between Turkey and uh, Greece is a little bit rusty and yeah, it's, well, not rusty, but you make jokes about them, they make jokes about you, everything that we think uh, are Greek, Greek, like Greek yogurt is actually Turkish yogurt and why, like, like stuff like that. And for example, Sweden, uh, for us, this is our beloved neighbor, but we make jokes about them. <laughs> we always make Swedish jokes and we kind of like we have a lot of competition between each other because we are always like we both are we are good at ice hockey and then we then we have like for example like sport games just Finland versus Sweden and there's just a lot of competition between Finland and Sweden <clears throat> and now it will be so interesting to see what happens with NATO are, are, are we going to go into NATO together or separately? So that's the today's topic in the news. And what does Turkey decide? 
the city of Byzantium, called Constantinople after his name. And by the end of the 4th century, the Roman Empire split into two parts, the western part with Rome as its capital, and the eastern part with Constantinople as its capital, an empire referred to by historians as the Byzantine Empire. This was the first time I got flashback from my history class. Yay, that feels good. I remember something. Which is believed to be the open gate for the Turkic people, which will come in Anatolia in the next decades and centuries is an important chapter in the history of Anatolia and in the history of what will be known as the Ottoman Empire and the Republic of Turkey. We are getting there. Ottoman Empire, Republic of Turkey. Many other smaller regions emerged, ruled by different leaders. These small kingdoms were called Baylids. One of them was ruled by Osman, which will be known as Osman I, the founder of the Ottoman Empire. It's believed that Osman's early followers consisted of both the Turkish tribal groups and Byzantine renegades, but not all were Muslims. It's not known for sure how this Baylid started. When I think back my history class, I always felt like it's history. You know, it's been, there's been a lot of wars and, and you know, countries has expanded and then they collapse and blah 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 and that is something in the past and you know like my age my life here in the world is just a, a tiny bit a tiny life like lifespan it's just a tiny few years so i don't have the time to experience any kind of history but now as we can see you know history keeps going we are writing history all the time and there's and the saying that history repeats itself it's kind of interesting especially now so it's just interesting to see that what happened ages ago is still happening today. The Ottoman experienced huge instability, marked by defeats, bad administration, revolts, and national movements across the empire due to its overextensions on lands with different peoples and cultures. The empire continued in the next years of the 19th century. It must be hard to rule an empire because it's so huge and there's so many different cultures and people. So it makes sense. What I've learned about you that that uh, t now even today Turkey has a lot of different cultures, like so many different cultures. So I have to read something. So there's a serious political and cultural tension in Turkish society today. The country can find itself in a civil war if something stupid happens. Turkish population is like 90 million now, 30 to 40 million ethnic. Ethnic Turks, maybe less. Six million Syrian refugees. They have a range of phenotype and usually can't speak Turkish well. Some people live in Western lifestyle, some live Islamic life, and some live with mainly based on their culture. Rudely saying, in West there are Turks, in East there are Kurds. If you need any super help from someone, if they look Islamic or traditional, then you are a Muslim first. If they have mustache like I have, tell them you are a Finn and that Finns are relative to Turks. Oh, that made me smile. I, yeah, I can't wait to visit Turkey. I feel that we are so much, we have so much similarities. You have a really good sense of humor and I like your language and I can't wait to see you. The country is really cheap for Europeans now due to the economical, due to economical crisis. Most people barely find food, but you can live like kings here. So, so, so pretty impressive, right? To summarize that, there's a lot of different cultures in Turkey and yeah, I can understand it's hard when you have like, when there's so many people thinking differently, it's hard. You need to have like the respect and dignity to live in peace, you know, let everyone shine. At the start of the First World War, the Ottoman Empire was at its final days, joining the central powers in the conflict after their defeat. The empire crumbled, and many of their territories were conceded in favor of Greece, Italy, Britain, and France. This loss created the start of the Turkish national movement, which will be known as the Turkish War of Independence, led by Mustafa Kemal. By September. Ataturk, of course. November 18th, 1922. But this is crazy, like, there's Greece zone, I understand Greece is quite close, but then there's Italian zone, what are Italians doing there? And French zone, what are the French doing there? Like, as the successor state of the Ottoman Empire, and the Republic was officially proclaimed on October 29th, 1923. Mustafa Kemal became the Republic's first president of Turkey, and subsequently introduced many radical reforms. More rights for women were established. A new writing system in the Latin alphabet for the Turkish language was created, and many others. The U.S. guaranteed the security of Turkey and Greece. Turkey joined NATO in 1952. Also, a boom in population happened in this country, growing from 17 million people in the 1930s to over 80 million today. Oh, we wow. know that there's more... Okay, thank you for watching. I hope I will not get a copyright strike now. Yeah, that's one thing I'm... Always scared about making these videos because you never know when your channel might be dead. But hey, this was quite nice to do. It was interesting and uh, my reactions are quite, you know, lame. 
And I hope you don't think that I'm stupid now because I don't have so much to say and I'm not so interested in, in, um, in history. I understand it's very good to know a little bit about your history, it's like common knowledge. Like the close history, the Ataturk time is, is, is interesting and, and I know that so many of you have recommended me to, to read the book there. The white, the land of the white lilies, which supposedly tells about Finland. I haven't read it yet, but uh, thank you for the, those recommendations. And yeah, this is a moment to say thank you to everyone who has been still sending me messages and uh, recommendations. And it's just, I, I appreciate it so much, and it really breaks my heart that I I don't have the time to make more videos for you because just knowing that there's some people who would like to see you. Your videos is, is like, is wow, I really embrace it and it's not something I take for granted and that's why I, I just hope I could do this like so much more, you know, to, to be able to, to interact with you and, and engage with you. Now when I'm making a video every once video, one video in every five months, you know, you barely even remember me anymore. But uh, yeah, it is how it is. If you made it so far, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry if, if I spoke too fast, uh, but sometimes I just speak a little bit fast. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video uh, and you're new to my channel, you can check out my other videos. I've been reacting to over 50 Turkish movies. That was the thing that everything started about those, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's time to wrap this. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This was nice to do. So hopefully see you soon. Bye bye.